Powerful Leadership Tips How to Be a Better Boss Empower Your Staff and Still Get Your Work Done Most small business owners think they've got a, a lot of hiring, managing, delegating, overseeing to do, leaving them little time to get the work done. If you find yourself in a similar situation, here are some tips and tricks that could help you be a better boss without sacrificing productivity. Welcome back, folks, to another edition of Sweetie Kiwi. I hope you are doing fantastic. I'm doing marvelous today. And if you are doing as great as I am, go grab a cup of coffee or tea. <laughs> today, we're going to talk about how to be a better boss, empower your staff, and still get your own work done. Before I get into the nitty gritty, let me quickly give a shout out to Lauren Jenkins and Alder Montana, Morgan Smith, and Dylan Montana, and Dylan Kennedy. In Bozeman, Montana. So, Dylan, Morgan, and Larry really appreciate your help. First tip have regular conversations with your team. It's very important to have a conversation on a weekly basis or bi weekly basis where you're, you're able to hear from the team. You want to hear from everybody, right? You want to be able to bring all, all the issues that are important. If you, again, the idea here is not to have long conversations. Those, could, those should be brief meetings where employees can ask questions or bring up issues in a group. So they don't have to come to you one at a time. The idea here is to collectivize, is to have a group meeting so you can sort of consolidate all the questions, all the pending issues and answer them at once. You can also hold one-on-one -on -one meetings with the employee, right? Keep them short. If you believe that the matter requires, I would say, personal attention, you can still do that. Another thing you want to do here is involve your employees in developing your new time management plan from the start. So if you want to plan your day or week or a month in advance, make sure that you publicize that info so, that, so the whole team knows your availability. You want to explain the problem you're having and how you're thinking about it where you're trying to go, the mission and the vision that you have so that you can get input from the get-go and, and this is the sweet spot, if you get input from the get-go, chances are you'll get buy-in once the decision is made, right? Input from the get-go, buy-in at the end. So have regular conversations with your team. Tip number two, empower employees. Now, this is a no-brainer, if you wanna get more time to get your own work done you have to empower your employees they have to be able to make decisions on their own all right now of course the the great thing here is that they will be thrilled to do so employees love to be empowered now it doesn't mean that you're delegating the whole house to them no it just means you're giving you're allocating to them strategic responsibilities you're giving them a bigger role they feel empowered they feel happy they feel considered right now many small business owners tend to micromanage employees and by doing that they prevent their staff from developing their own skills so if you're able to step back take some time you know every, you know from time to time to step back you're allowing your employees to make more time for their own work and the good thing is you're also having time for your own work which is what we want right so Empower them to make their own decisions, but give them limits. All right. Number three, powerful leadership tip number three, create accountability and feedback loops. This is very important. What, what's a feedback loop? Feedback loop means that you are, you have a system whereby employees are given constructive criticism on their work, on their performance on a continuous basis. This can be automated. In other words, you can set up, you can send out an email every Monday or Tuesday, once a week to the employees, or it could be random. It could be more informal, but you've got to have that feedback loop, all right? So you are giving them feedback. Now the feedback loop, loop can go both ways, right? So they also giving, they are also giving you feedback on your leadership, on your management style, on your performance, right? Which is really great because it allows you to hear from your staff and correct some of the inefficiencies that you personally have. Another thing you want to think about is accountability loop. 
Accountability, accountability loop basically is a system whereby you are given responsibilities, you are delegating tasks to staff, and you find you make sure that they are accountable. There are consequences if those tasks are not performed. Let me give you a simple example. Let's say you allow your your personnel to have company credit card, right? That's a big empowerment, right? You're allowing them to use the company's credit card when uh, doing business when doing business on behalf of the company, right? For instance, receiving guests or taking clients out, but they have to be accountable. They have to substantiate all expenses. They have to bring all the receipts. They have to justify all the expenses. And if there is something, you know, they have to be able to say, listen, I am on the hook. I'll pay for any deficiency, any expenses that I'm, I have not been able to justify. I'll pay for it. Another thing that you have to understand is that accountability and feedback loops are part of what's, what experts called the traditional performance evaluation process, right? And this could be done on a quarterly, biannual, or annual basis. You can also do a 360 review on accountability and feedback. 360 reviews means that the employees are able to be judged or evaluated not only by their bosses and their co-workers but also by their subordinates all right now the great way to make the accountability and feedback loops work is to appoint process owners or task owners in other words you want to nominate you want to uh, not nominate it's just like a oscar sort of terminology <laughs> hollywood terminology no you want to appoint people who are ultimately responsible to you about a task or about a process that way you're able to verify accountability and feedback very very quickly i'll be right back right after this don't go anywhere Welcome back, folks, to another edition of Sweetie Q. We're still having a conversation today about um, how to be a better boss, empower your staff, and still get your own work done. If you love our powerful leadership tips so far, please consider subscribing to our channel and turn on the notification bell. We'll sure appreciate that. Comment below. Leave us a like. Smash the thumbs. That um, thumbs up. Give a, thumb, a thumbs up to um, this video and share now i want to quickly give a shout out to nancy watts in Buttonville, arkansas beautiful state arkansas aubrey carroll in rogers arkansas and jack torres in portsmouth arkansas jack aubrey and nancy really appreciate your help your support your contribution your suggestions really just wonderful we're really grateful for that tip number four communicate about the bigger picture now a lot of small business owners and a lot of business owners in general because um, you know people think that small business owners are bound to be small business owners all the time no if the company grows you become a business owner now regardless you want to communicate by the by the big picture you want to set goals right S -s set smart goals smart standing for specific measurable attainable relevant and time bound you want to break those big goals those big smart goals into objectives another way to communicate about the bigger picture here is to make the company's mission and vision clear and adopted it. it's very important you want your staff to be on board you want this your staff you want to get the buy-in from them when it comes to the vision and the mission you the best way to communicate also about the bigger picture is to have automatic reminders sent to staff this could be weekly emails monthly meetings quarterly town halls whatever it is whatever works for you automate it and make the reminder being sent auto being sent regularly number five powerful leadership tip number five create a schedule let's say you have you have gone over your your own tasks your company, your staff desk, and you have uh, identified a few patterns. You can develop a better plan for using your time if you are able to create a schedule, right? You, you want, you don't want to have, the last thing you want is to have a loose and flexible schedule. That's the gateway to laziness, to productivity, you know, what I call productivity lethargy. 
you're not able to get things done, you probably get one or two things done out of five. And that's like 40%. Nobody wants that, right? You want to sit, try to set some time aside for making, for making a schedule, right? Whether it is early in the morning or late at night when you are alone in the office or very few staff members are still there. This is really, really the time you need to plan your day. Okay. Another thing you want to do is to use project management tools. Now, this is important. I mean, there are tons of them out there. You have simple one, complex one, you have free ones, you have paid ones. I would suggest if you are doing this for your business, it's good to pay for a productivity or a project management program, right? They, they're they pretty, they're pretty cheap. I mean, some go as, I'm not going to name names here, but you have, you can find one for 20 bucks or 30 bucks per month, which is really like you, some kind of utility. That's the, that's the, the, for one license. And it's pretty, it's pretty cheap. It's pretty affordable, right? So you, you want to choose a system that has all the features that your business needs, right? But again, not too complex to um, sort of uh, scare your employees away. So the idea here is to streamline everybody's jobs and keep track of tasks so that you don't have to run interference, right? So I'll be right back right after this, don't go anywhere. Welcome back folks to another edition of Sweetie Kiwi. We're still having a conversation about the powerful leadership tips, how to be a better boss, empower your staff, and still get your, your work done. I want to quickly give a shout out to Christina Carmacho in Cuddleville in Michigan, Carmen Bradford in Zilwaukee, Michigan, and Timothy Cooper in Eckerman, Michigan. Beautiful state of Michigan, we have Christina, Carmen, and Timothy. Thank you so much for your uh, suggestions and your help. We really appreciate it. We continue our conversation today and we're talking about powerful leadership number seven, leadership tip number seven step back step back is very key folks you need to trust your your staff right if you think about the ceo of a company or the president of the united states or the prime minister of of, uh, of, of the uk or any head, head you know any head of state they don't spend hours upon hours researching the policy initiatives or feedback loops or you know, they don't spend that time they rely on whom advisors right so they get daily briefings from experts and advisors to stay up to speed right so you want to think as a president you want to you want to focus on the big picture instead of the small details right don't try to macro manage your staff don't try to project manage don't try to project manage yourself delegate right have others handle the day-to-day and brief you on the important stuff so that you can focus on the important stuff the one that adds value remember the Pareto there is something called the Pareto principle Pareto principle stands for 2080 in other words 20% of your of your customers bring in 80% of uh, your revenue the same could be true for you know productivity personal productivity so 20% of the task you do should be focused on bringing 80% of the revenue number eight develop systems now if you have the budget for it or the, the skill set for it you can really sort of develop systems to handle anything anything from operations to to payments to billings to purchasing this is very important now right a lot of small businesses need some type of operations manual or process guide that can help employees deal with situation that arises right this is important because it allows you not to be in the day-to-day -day operations stuff happens problems happens every single day but if employees have some kind of manual or guide to fall back onto you don't have to be there you can be somewhere you can actually be running one or two or three or four businesses simultaneously right this is very important so if you haven't already written down systems and procedures and share them with your employees now may be the time you don't even have to write that yourself if you if this is not your forte outsource the task outsource it to um, a consultant okay number nine leadership tip number nine set up a shareable knowledge base 
Now, a knowledge base is very important. The knowledge base is really a repository of information and solutions to common problems that can arise in your business. Think of it as the FAQ you find on a website, right? The frequently asked questions and answers you find on the website. This is basically what you want to have. You want to have a shareable knowledge base that allows your employees to be autonomous, to solve problems on their own because somebody has taken the time to write down all the potential problems and the potential solutions to those problems, right? Now, a knowledge base can also serve as an adjunct to your operations manual. And this allow the employees to leave you alone. They don't have to find solutions within your presence. They can find solutions on their own, right? So, so they don't have to run to you every time. Okay, I'll be right back right after this. Don't go anywhere. Welcome back, folks, to another edition of Sweetie Kiwi. We are about to wrap up today's conversation and. Um, I just want to quickly give a shout out to a Queen Prince, Queen Price Oliver in Melbourne, New Hampshire, Frankie Oliver in Portsmouth, Portsmouth or Portsmouth, New Hampshire, New Hampshire, and Mackay Chambers in London, Derry, New Hampshire. So Mackay, Frankie, and Queen Price, thank you so much for your contribution all the way from the beautiful state of New Hampshire. Please, folks, subscribe to our channel if you haven't done so already. Comment below, share, and like this content. Really appreciate it. Here is a recap of today's conversation. You know, here what we our nine powerful leadership tips: how to be a better boss, empower your staff, and still get your work done. Number one: have regular conversations with your team. Two: empower employees. Three: create accountability and feedback loops. Four: communicate with communicate about the bigger picture. Five. Create a schedule. Six, use project management tools. Seven, step back. Eight, develop systems. Nine, set up a shareable knowledge base. This is really pretty much it. Before I kind of go, I just want to give you a last tip. Here is my pro tip. Pay attention. You want to think about, you want to think about tracking your time for two weeks or however, however long you need to get a representative sample of your workday. The idea is to track things so you know where you spend time, where you spend most of your time, where you waste most of the time, and what kind of uh, patterns you have during the day. Because the last thing you want is to be interrupted and uh, by staff, right? And you know whether it is during meetings or after meetings. So you want to identify all the pain points that prevent you from getting your work done and find solutions for them, right? When it comes to feedback, you can even cons you can even create a, a, an anonymous suggestion box. They don't have to come to you all the time. They can just uh, leave. They, they can just drop their feedback in something anonymous, and you know you take care of it afterwards. All right. This is just a pro tip. I will talk to you another time. Thank you so much for your uh, attention. And until then, stay marvelous.